if let's say we take the example of Huawei, um, what about those who argue that the relationship with the government is so strong that for all intents and purposes it still has some kind of strong central government link? How do you uh, reassure that, that that is not true? So in past 20 years, actually by very serious market competition, Huawei becomes the you know, uh, a leader, a leading corporation uh, in these sectors. Of course, in that process, uh, I think that uh, Huawei uh, Corporation uh, is, uh, uh, has keeping you know, very good relationship uh, with uh, local government and the central government. But I think that uh, all of those Huawei's behavior uh, especially their uh, market, uh, their performance uh, in the market, actually uh, accept, uh, recognized by not only China's you know consumers, uh, as well as you know in uh, more than 150 countries, because those countries they they are using Huawei equipment and also they accepted Huawei's you know. Uh, you know, a smartphone. So you're saying that the, the apprehensions that some US lawmakers may have, and also to some degree also uh, some of the Europeans, uh, concerns about Huawei's technology, now we're moving into that area, that it might be influenced again by, uh, by political uh, forces here uh, in China? Uh, I noticed that a very interesting phenomenon that is from the UK. Uh, at the beginning, they also thought, you know, uh, Huawei's, you know, uh, equipment uh, and uh, regarding security issues, uh, even if, you know, political impact, something like that. But recently, the UK, they said, uh, okay, actually, we can make assessments. Also, we can take measures you know, to Risk control. Management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm afraid that uh, right, uh, right now, maybe there are some of overreaction you know, from Western world. So I hope that, uh, you know, uh, by the time passing <laughs> and gradually uh, those, uh, you know, people uh, keeping, you know, deeply worrying about uh, Huawei's equipment, uh, gradually they can, you know, realize that uh, that's over, you know, uh, reaction. There have though been certain uh, moves by uh, China to say that there are going to be certain sectors that they want to do really well in from a technology point of view for the 2025 projections. Uh, and many of these, of course, involve a lot of telecommunications as well as data. So how does that square up? Uh, my understanding is that uh, for those AI, big data and, you know, uh, telecommunication equipment, um, uh, smartphone and robots, uh, even if, you know, new energy car, so all of those new sectors, new economies, uh, actually will rely on market competition. By another words, I think that, you know, uh, both China's private players and, you know, uh, foreign players will play more and more important role. For big SOEs, their, you know, innovation, you know, uh, mechanism actually uh, cannot compare with those uh, private sectors. <laughs>
too eager, you know, <laughs> to get progress. Uh, you know that uh, in China we have an uh, old saying that is uh, too eager to drink hot water. China's reform and opening up have its own, you know, uh, step, and we have to promote it, uh, you know, one by one, and uh, in order to keep, uh, you know, stable development uh, and a stable market uh, environment. But uh, uh, if you can't imagine that, uh, you know, uh, China's market economy, you know, just have four decades. But Western, for Western world, their market economy already 300 years or, you know, longer. So it, you can't expect that within one night, all of things could be happened. So just keep some of patience.